Roy on Rescue. Today we're going to talk about something that's actually soon to be possibly an issue. It can be an issue actually all the time, but as we enter into the winter fall months, we start firing up the furnaces, this particular danger could be a real problem. We're down in a basement today to look at a couple of the things that can cause this culprit and what I want to talk about is carbon monoxide poisoning. Carbon monoxide poisoning can come from a couple different sources. It can either be from hot water heaters that are not uh, well vented or are wearing out or it could actually be from a furnace which uh, is not vented as well. See the thing with carbon monoxide is it's the byproduct of burned gases and if the venting is not done properly we can have a real problem with carbon monoxide gas getting back into the home. Sometimes there are byproducts that give it an odor, many times there's no odor at all. Some of the signs and symptoms can be uh, a feeling of illness, a feeling of a headache, nausea, um, not really with the program, extremely tired. Those common signs and symptoms should be your first alert that something is wrong. Problem with that is, is as we enter into fall and winter, they can also be the sign of the flu bug coming on. And many times that's what people think. They go to bed, they don't recognize those signs and symptoms as being something that is poisoning them in their environment, and they miss it. They go to bed, they never wake up. Um, if a person believes that they have carbon monoxide poisoning, one of the best ways to know this is <clears throat> A, they suddenly start to develop this only at home with other people in the home feeling the same way or similar. Another problem would be pets who are unconscious or ill, especially birds, pet birds, may be affected by the carbon monoxide very quickly. As we look at this, um, the best thing to do is get out of the environment as fast as possible and get to fresh air. Activate EMS, call 911, and get treatment. Carbon monoxide uh, bonds to the hemoglobin of the blood and it is very hard to get that bonding to break up and get that carbon monoxide off. In some cases, in severe poisonings, we actually have to bring the people down to a hyperbaric chamber and positively um, push that carbon monoxide molecule off from the hemoglobin so that oxygen molecules can come back in. That's how carbon monoxide kills people. It bonds to the hemoglobin, doesn't allow O2 to get through it, and it basically suffocates the person even though they're breathing. Um, so if this is a problem, make sure that you get emergency care right away, get into a fresh air environment, and be sure to get proper treatment. Preventatively, there's a couple things we can do. Here we have a fairly old carbon monoxide detector, but still works. The carbon monoxide detector senses the CO in the room sends an alarm allowing people to know that there's a problem. If you're afraid that yours is outdated, old, or malfunctioning, be sure to get a brand new one. It's only about twenty, thirty, maybe fifty dollars, but it could save your family's life. And last but not least, you always need to think about the garage. Leaving a car running in a garage, even with the door open, can sometimes build up carbon monoxide gases and cause a real problem. Again, if you notice those signs and symptoms, be sure to get into a well-ventilated area, activate emergency medical services, and get help right away. From Roy and Rescue, I hope this was helpful. Be safe, enjoy the fall weather, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Roy and Rescue is brought to you by ProTrainings.com, online training and certification. MyMMAPro.com. Be sure to email your questions to Roy on rescue at gmail.com. <laughs>